subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. Why is following Christ so difficult? No sane parent has ever said, I wish my children would misbehave. And there's never been a self-help book entitled, How to Live an Unhappy Life. We all want blessings, happiness, and fulfillment, and we associate a happy condition with a certain amount of ease. Jesus promises blessing and fulfillment to those who follow him, but many people have been surprised that the way of Christ is not as easy as they had hoped. Sometimes, following Christ can be downright difficult. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. The fact is, blessing and hardship are not mutually exclusive. The disciples left everything to follow Christ, and the Lord promised them a hundred times as much blessing in return. Jesus warned that all who follow him must deny themselves and bear a daily cross. Hardship to be sure, but hardship with a purpose and leading to the joy of the Lord. Followers of Christ also face resistance from the world. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Jesus did not promise his disciples that everything would be coming up roses for them, just the opposite, he promised that they would have trials in this world. But take heart, he told them, I have overcome the world. God's moral laws have been written on the heart of every human, giving all people a conscience to aid them in determining wrong from right. When a person becomes a follower of Christ, he not only has God's laws in his heart, but he also has the indwelling Holy Spirit to compel him toward living righteously. This in no way means the Christian will stop sinning, but it does mean the Christian will become more aware of his own personal sin and have a genuine desire to do what is pleasing to Christ. In many ways, it is after a person is saved that the struggle against sin really heats up in his life. All people are born with a nature that is bent towards sin, which is why children do not need to be taught how to misbehave, that comes naturally. When a person is converted, the sin nature does not disappear completely, and so the internal conflict begins in the life of every believer. The Apostle Paul, who called himself a bondservant to Christ, writes of the struggle with his sin nature in Romans, chapter 7, verse 14 to 25. In verse 15, he says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. Christians engaged in this battle have a true desire to avoid sin, but they also have a natural desire to indulge the flesh. They become frustrated when they find themselves doing what they don't want to do. And to further complicate matters, Christians not only do not want to sin, they hate sin. Yet, we still sin. Paul goes on to write, It is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Paul is referring to the dichotomy caused by the new birth. Paul is a new man through Christ. But he still sins, because sin is still alive in the human flesh, the sin nature survives the new birth. Paul calls the internal strife a war, as the new man battles the old man. Paul found the battle quite distressing, because he wanted to do well. Paul cries out in his distress, what a wretched man I am. Every Christian who is attempting to live righteously is called to this battlefield for his entire life. We are in a spiritual battle. But in grace and mercy, God gives the faithful believer an entire suit of armor for the fight. The Christian life is never easy, but the difficulties do not negate the joy. We consider Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. God has set us free from the slavery to sin, the victory is ours. Through the Holy Spirit, believers receive encouragement, strength to persevere, and reminders of their adoption into the family of God. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Please rate the video, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. The video is free to use on your channel without giving me any credit. God bless you all.